Hey everybody, welcome back. So today uh, we are coming to you from the St. Williams Conservation Area, the multi-use trails that are there, just, just north of Turkey Point. And uh, I'm out getting a little bit of practice in the sand, getting some of the cobwebs uh, uh, shaken off from the winter and uh, you know, long periods of not riding off road. Um, so yeah, today I wanna talk about something that's gonna be a bit more serious. It's a bit heavier subject today. And what I want to talk about is suicide and veterans and first responders and, and suicide in general. Um, Cause there are some, uh, some important discussions we need to have. And uh, as a community and as a society, we really need to do a better job of discussing this. And uh, yeah, you know, it's no secret. Uh, there is a huge, huge uh, uptick in suicides in the veteran and first responder communities. Uh, you know, when we take into consideration some of those experiences and traumas that were never processed, post-traumatic stress disorder, that loss of identity and uh, being alienated after service or just feeling like you don't fit, uh, you know, those are all things that contribute to it. And I did a video last year, uh, I would have been in Yellowknife, so, you know, probably around, you know, close to the, uh, to the end of July and about suicidal ideation and talking about uh, my experience is basically when, you know, your mind makes suicide an option. And that was a really difficult video to do. Uh, also shared in there uh, about a friend of mine who had told me, you know, that he had, he had made an attempt. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a tough video to shoot. And uh, the link for that to the YouTube video will be down in the, uh, down in the description. Or you can go back through the videos on the page here and, and check those out. Um, but yeah, um, veteran suicide is a huge problem and people don't like to talk about it. And people don't like to bring it up when they're experiencing that ideation and people don't like to discuss it in general. And that is just a, it's a huge problem. It's a huge problem. And, you know, I, I think the approach is, you know, the aversion to it. It's that whole idea that if we talk about it, it's gonna put it in people's minds. And, you know, that's still, that still happens. And it's the same with, you know, talking to your kids about sex and drugs. It's gonna happen. Somebody's gonna talk to them about it. And if it's not you, it's gonna be somebody else. Um, and suicide's kind of the same. If you don't talk to people about it um, as a topic of conversation, then it's gonna come up in the worst way at the worst times. Uh, Cause it's not like anybody doesn't know about that it exists, you know? Um, and I think that's kind of one of the big things um, about not discussing suicide and not discussing, you know, you, when you don't have those discussions in a controlled way, um, when everybody's in a good space, then what ends up happening is that uh, when that comes up, when that ideation basically comes about, um, you're in this state of isolation. You know, you are, uh, you're alone as it is, which is probably leading to those suicidal thoughts because there's a feeling of being alone in some way. And, you know, you get into this, basically this positive feedback loop about it. Um, so basically, uh, you know, I'm alone and isolated and nobody understands what I'm going through. So, you know, there's that depression that goes with it. And when your mind identifies suicide as an option or as a course of action, uh, there's then this, this thing like, well, if I bring that up to anybody, they're going to, you know, people are going to lose, they're going to lose their minds. Uh, I'm going to be even more isolated and, uh, you know, so you don't bring it up and then it's in your mind going, you can't talk to people about this and that cycle of isolation, you know, you're just in a spiral. And, and then unfortunately what's essentially happening is you're having that discussion about suicide and you're having a very one-sided discussion with yourself amidst all your other struggles. And, you know, this is where, this is where it comes to that unfortunate end. And, you know, how many of us have lost friends and said to yourself, oh, if they just said something, if I'd only known, um, you know, why didn't they just talk to me? And, uh, you know, there it is because we don't talk about it when it's, when it's not, uh, being explored or considered or imposed as a course of action. Cause sometimes your mind will just kind of impose these things on you and you got to fight it off. That was my case. You know, it popped up and suddenly like I, I use the analogy, it's like a song stuck in your head that you hate. 
you know, uh, take the most annoying song in the world and you, it gets stuck in your head and you can't get rid of it. And that's how suicidal ideation presented to me. And I managed to fight it off, but I, I didn't talk to a lot of people about it. Um, I talked to probably one person and that was the one person who made the difference and helped, helped me to continue fighting, you know, and, and carrying on. But I think if I had completely isolated myself and made it, um, completely internalized it, that outcome could have been a lot different. And that's a very sobering thought. So, you know, um, the other thing is when somebody tries to talk to you about suicide and again, just having the conversation, not saying there's an attempt or intent, um, but just having the conversation, there's this knee jerk reaction in people to, um, kind of spring to assistance, you know? Um, so I, I had that video that I put out last year, suicidal ideation, where I talked about a lot of these things and it was emotional. I was talking about a friend who had, uh, who had attempted to take his own life. I was for the first time really discussing the fact that I had been, uh, taken to a place in my life where my mind identified that as a, as an option, as a course of action. Uh, even though, you know, I didn't want it. I don't think any, nobody wants it. Um, you know, so I shared that video and it was very emotional. And honestly, there are a lot of people who kind of missed the point. Um, and people took it as a cry for help. Okay. Uh, you know, let's put it into context. I'm riding across the country. I'm talking about these issues. I'm trying to bring awareness to the issues. I'm trying to confront these issues myself and, you know, trying to kind of peel the, the veil back on that. And, you know, instead of people understanding that, yeah, it's an emotional subject. And unfortunately there's experiences and there's uh, there's loss there because I've lost friends um, and people I know, you know, and that knee jerk reaction is, you know, oh, you know, do you, do you need help? Um, you know, or, or, um, you know, and I know that comes from a place of concern, but that makes it hard to have that conversation. It makes it hard to bring it up. Uh, even to the point of even shooting this video today, you know, it's, it's in the back of my mind that the, the second that title goes up talking about suicide, um, that there's probably going to be that feeling like, you know, uh, I need somebody to throw me a line. Um, so that also can be a barrier to having those conversations in that controlled environment and in a constructive way, um, before somebody's in crisis, you know, just don't, don't assume people are in crisis cause they want to talk about this. Uh, it needs to be discussed and, uh, you know, so temper your reactions when somebody brings it up. And I'm not saying when somebody gives you the signs that there's the, that they're at that point where it's going to be an issue or where it's potentially going to happen that you ignore it. Not at all. You know, you directly ask the question, are you thinking about harming yourself right now? You know, calmly ask that question. Are you thinking about killing yourself right now? No, you just want to talk about suicide. Cool. Let's talk about it and let's talk about it. Um, you know, in as even a manner as we can for, for a discussion or for a topic that's that, uh, that's that difficult to discuss. And the more we talk about those things and the more we have normal discussions about those things, the less likely it is that we're going to lose people because people are going to realize that they can talk about it and they can explore that subject without somebody calling, you know, the authorities to come scoop them up or, um, without the fear of persecution or judgment. So yeah, that's, um, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of that discussion on, on veteran suicide that I wanted to broach today. Now, going along with that, I want to talk about what happened last year on the 19th of July, when I joined up with the rolling barrage in Calgary and we rode out to Kamloops for the morning. So we do our morning safety brief and right off the bat, um, or before we ride, uh, Scott Casey, who's the CEO he's the, of uh, Military Minds Inc. He's the or president of Military Minds Inc. Rather, and the uh, the founder of the Rolling Barrage uh, gives a safety brief and says, "Look, you know, we we dedicate every day of the ride to a brother or sister that we've lost to suicide." And uh, you know, I thought that was very powerful, 
And it's not a matter of glorifying the act. It's a matter of acknowledging the fact that we, we lose people that way, you know. Um, and that is starting to be recognized as um, a service loss. The fact that, um, that, you know, suicide can be attributed to service. Right. Uh, for the longest time, it was kept very separate. Uh, you know, somebody leaves, uh, leaves the forces and, you know, they, they kind of succumb to that, um, to that course of action and commit suicide. And it's just regarded as something completely separate, not attributable, attributable to their service. And Veterans Affairs has started to recognize that. Um, the Legion has recognized that, you know, there was, uh, I think a few years ago, the first Silver Cross mother. So the Silver Cross mother is uh, somebody picked, a, you know, the, the mother of a fallen soldier who's, who's picked, uh, you know, every year to, uh, to act in a role uh, kind of as ambassador uh, for the Legion, the Silver Cross uh, program. So, um, you know, a couple years ago, the first Silver Cross mother who lost a child to suicide after service was uh was recognized and you know that's all progress uh there's recently a story about uh uh the canada company and the bursaries and scholarships they give to the children of uh, fallen soldiers to go to school and this was in the case of brad elms captain brad elms had uh had unfortunately committed suicide and, and i i knew brad um not well but we we're in the same regiment i definitely knew him you know uh, knew him to see him and knew him professionally. And uh, so his one of his children was turned down for a scholarship because as they saw it, it wasn't, you know, a fallen soldier from a, an operational theater. So these are the attitudes that slowly, you know, we hope will change um, and, and it's happening. But uh, yeah, so every day they dedicated the ride to uh, you know, a, a veteran or first responder who had committed suicide. And again, not about glorifying, but honoring the fact that that is a, is a, is a loss in service. That is, that is a service casualty. And um, so this particular day, uh, you know, when first thing in the morning he asked, are there any nominations to who we're going to ride for today? And uh, kind of I waited a few seconds and nobody spoke up. Uh, so I kind of put forward the name of my friend, Master Corporal Chris Clark. And uh, I served with Chris in one Nova Scotia Highlanders when I first joined the forces as a reservist. And again, in two RCR. And uh, yeah, sadly, um, Chris took his own life on this day, June 13th in 2005. So just 14 years ago today. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you, there were so many people affected by that loss. Um, you know, Chris had just come back from, from Haiti the year before and, uh, you know, he, he was struggling and people, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know he was struggling. And then you get that news and it just, it hits you like a ton of bricks. So last July 19th, we rode for in, in, uh, in the memory of my friend Chris. And that meant so much, you know, um, so that's something I want to continue with dispatches this year. Uh, instead of waiting in the morning to nominate people, you know, um, I want to formalize it a bit. I want to do it ahead of time. I want to do it in a very thoughtful manner. I want to make sure that, you know, we honor the memory of these people who, you know, simply couldn't fight anymore because they are, you know, they're, they are the casualties of war and the casualties of service. Um, sadly, I could come up with 11 names um, easily myself of people that I have lost to suicide. Um, I'll be, I could probably come up with 22, you know, I could come up with two a day. Uh, but what I, what I'm hoping is that, um, folks out there, other riders or people who are just, you know, following along, if you know someone, um, a veteran or first responder who, who has taken their own life, um, you know, please get in contact, share their story, and we'll look at dedicating one day of the ride to them. Ideally, I would like to have nominations from the communities that we're, we're going to be riding through. So Gaspé Peninsula, 
down the uh, east coast of New Brunswick into PEI, uh, North, North Shore, Nova Scotia, uh, on through the Cabot Trail, Cape Breton, the west coast of Newfoundland, uh, the Trans Labrador, so Labrador City, Happy Valley Goose Bay, Port Hope Simpson, and then down into Bay Como and Quebec City again. Um, so I'd like nominations of first responders or veterans um, that people know who have taken their own lives from those communities and on the days that we ride through those communities those are the people i would like to dedicate that ride to that day so i open that up to everybody there you know please get in touch and we'll make sure you know it's 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 done well and the message is shared that it happens and we have to talk about it and we can never forget you know um and this is coming you know a week after uh just a little yeah a week after d-day uh, the 75th anniversary of D-Day, where we lost, you know, over 3,000 Canadians in one day. And, uh, you know, we can never forget them. And we can't forget the people who come back and fight. And we can't forget the people who come back and, and just fight until they can't anymore. So, yeah, that's the aim behind that. And, uh, you know, please get in touch. Um, let us know if, you wanna, if uh, there's somebody you want to nominate and uh you know let's do this right let's make sure their memory's honored so um again, that's that's the talk for today um again a, a hard hard discussion to have and uh there's there's a couple more things to come along with this in the coming weeks um you know and, and i intentionally um came out here today to to play in the sand a little bit um just because I know as I bring this up, it brings a lot of emotion with it. And, you know, once I pack up this camera, it'll be time to get back on the bike and, you know, um, <laughs> time, to, time to kind of feel that, uh, you know, feel that back tire spin out and feel, uh, feel the trail and, you know, just be in the, you know, be out here in the woods and, um, and to balance that fact that I'm dragging up these memories with uh with that activity because it's important that we we do those same things it can't be it can't be all serious and all heavy all the time you know you, you got to be able to mix the two you got to be able to broach these subjects and carry on with the rest of your life and uh so that's why i i chose today uh to talk about that so i'm gonna leave you with that for for this week guys um ride dates leaving quebec city august 5th and returning to Quebec City the 15th of August. Registration info or uh, registration link is down in the uh, is down in the video description. So come on out, come ride for the day, come ride for the 11 days. Uh, come on out and uh, and just connect and say hello. Whether you're a veteran, a first responder, you have a loved one who's a first responder, you're in any way concerned about mental health and just connecting with people who are out there. Uh, talking about it and you know making sure that that cause isn't ignored uh, you know anybody at all come out come out and say hello and uh, in the coming weeks I'll be talking about how you can figure out exactly where we are while we're on the road so that you'll be able to do that and uh, yeah that's it guys I will talk to you next week take care of yourselves take care of each other check on your buddies and uh, have a good week guys